Guten Morgen, meine Freunde und Willkommen. The more mature music fan learns to take a lot in their stride. They can listen to Alice Coltrane or Jimmy Guffrey and make a measured and critical assessment on that. They can listen to the wilder excesses of, say, Frank Zappa or Heavy Prog and they can make their own decision there based on the fact that they've heard the music that formed it and they've heard the music that came out of it. They are a rounded musical fan. But there are few forms of music that raise the hackles, that aggravate the ire, that incite the hue and cry amongst older fans of the classical canon than hip-hop, particularly contemporary hip-hop. But it is the largest and most viable musical genre in the world and has been for 25 years. So in order to get some idea as to why it might be so popular and so incredibly diverse in its current forms, I got my daughter Ivy, whom you might remember from our ABBA video, to curate a list of contemporary hip-hop sounds from the SoundCloud rappers to mumble rappers to trap rappers to uh, rappers who are more and more commercial R&B styles. And I thought we'd have a look at the reactions to that and uh, a brief discussion on them afterwards so that Ivy can give us some context on the people who are basically either dominating or going to dominate over the next few years the course of the classical canon. It's going to be nice to have Ivy back and hopefully we can have a little fun. So let's talk about the first one that I listened to, and that was, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this, Triple Extension. Triple Extension, also okay. just known as Triple X. Okay, say that again for the nice people at home. Triple X. Um, Tentacion, also known as just Triple X. Yeah, apparently he's the number one selling emo rapper in the world. I saw that, but I have to disagree. I don't think he would be. I would reckon Little Peep would have outsold him as emo rap. But he no longer sells, oh, well, I guess X Triple X Tantation doesn't sell any records anymore either, do they? Nor does Little Peep. <laughs> the song was called Revenge, by the way. I thought it was pretty good. Um, but it, it, it's not really hip hop, is it? It was more of a, a songy, a Michael Franti jam. Well, I was. I was doing some wee research into Mr. Mr. Triple X. So basically what Mr. X did was back in the wee days of juvenile detention in 2014, where he met the another rapper, Ski Master Slump God, um, he taught Ski Mask about unconventional rap flows, pretty much. And he was more into explore, exploring emo rap, trap, lo-fi, yep. indie rock type R&B stuff. So he wasn't a very conventional rapper, as you would say. Diversifying his rap portfolio. Mm. He yeah. really started off emo rap in a way. What would he be doing now had he not been murdered on the street in Florida, wasn't it? In Florida, where he was born. Listen, he'd probably still be in and out of jail. Um, so he'd still be talking about real depressing stuff. He'd be real heavy in his emo rap. But I think he would be doing a lot more stuff like revenge type thing. I think he moved away from the angst and all that. He just wanted to make good music. Next one I listened to was Doja Cat. All the stuff you gave me on Doja Cat was just too far from hip hop. It was very, very good, but they were more like disco slammers or R&B songs that she was doing. Uh, so this is very SoundCloud rappers, but I don't consider Doja Cat to be a SoundCloud rapper. She was very start of TikTok rappers. A little bit, TikTok rappers are, 
they're more in it for the clout. I would say they're more in it for the fun and the woos. When SoundCloud rapper was more drugs, gangs, I've had a hard life, do 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 type thing. Well, I listened to a song called Boss Bitch, which yeah, it was sort of middle of the, the, the road. There was nothing too terrible about it. There was nothing so great about it, but her disco-y stuff was very good. Mm, Doja Cat is very new age disco. She's really kicked off that new mo- The song you listened to was written for the new Harley Quinn movie to be the uh-huh. part of the soundtrack. So that's why it's a little bit different from her other stuff. And she's obviously, she's still recording. She's still. Yeah, like, she's still very music. active. She's one, of, I would say she's probably one of the best selling women and at the moment. It was, it was a sort of a, a, an odd one. It was Little Peep with Little Tracy. Now, I didn't like it when I first heard it, but a couple mm. goes through and it grows on you, that one. Yeah, I I have a problem with Little Peep, but I also really like Little Peep. Little Peep is a very whiny little white boy. That's his whole thing. He was aware of so much privilege that he had that he didn't want the privilege anymore. He was a self-defined loner. He was wanting to be an outcast. I look through that through my social work lens and I'm like, it's very irresponsible to me to just give up your privilege instead of using it for the better. Someone who doesn't have a game plan is Little Uzi Vert. And his song XO2. Will Uzi Bird is a billionaire. He has a great game plan. But not a musical one. His music, he uses so much auto tune, he sounds like a Dalek. It's so funny though. I love that little man. Will Uzi Bird, he's an acquired taste. I remember listening to him for XO2 Life in yes. the back of year 12 math class for the first time. And that's how I got introduced to um, Triple X and Uzi Vert is I was in the back of year 12 math class and I was sharing a headphone with this girl and she played me a bunch of that stuff. And I was like, what is this noise? Yeah. I like this noise. <laughs> but the one brilliant thing with Uzi Vert was everybody knows EXO to a life. It doesn't matter if you're a, a golf or a prep or a the horse girl, you know XO to life, and you somehow know all the mumbles to that song. It is very mumbly and very, very like, um, he's a sad little Davros in that one. He is a sad little boy. Trippy Red, Miss the Rain. It sounds like the Hamburglar has become a rapper. It's just, there's absolutely no variation in that song. Ah, I don't like Trippy Red. <laughs> I like the Hamburglar. Um, Trippy Red, he sounds like a worse little Wayne, if that's possible. He has the same whiny little mumbly tone. I'm like, yeah, give me a whiff right now. I'm like, sir. What are you saying? And it just never varies. It's it's like the one part of the song, just, I mean, hip hop began with taking the end grooves of songs and stretching them out forever. Well, mm-hmm. he's gone and done that, but he's just chosen a really uninteresting groove to stretch out forever. It's not even a groove. It's just a- He's thump. just saying words in a sequence and yeah. they're just there. His tone never varies. His beat never varies. No, every time he comes on shuffle. Skip. Who I did enjoy though was Juice World. Everybody loves Juice World. I got his little album. He was way more than a rapper. I mean, the one that I listened to was a song called Man of the Year, and that's an R slammer. There's another song that he raps on with Ski Master Slump God called 
Nuketown? Nuketown, yeah. You can really rap on that. I mean, he's really very good. Mm-hmm. He's, he's got, he's, yeah. uh, he's like a double threat there. The Man of the Year is a really great song. Um, and yeah. a lot of his other stuff is like that in that R&B vein. So any of the listeners out there who want to get into a SoundCloud rapper and want to path in, Juice World is your guy because he produces music that you as an older musical fan can understand the rules to. And then you go out to his rapping. Yeah. He, he was a very talented young man. Yeah. Um, Juice World was a phenomenal source. Um, man of the Year was on his um, album that got put out after his death. And that album, Legend Never Dies, is such an incredible, well produced album. It's got all your little raps and it's got the more r and type songs yep. uh he could do everything and he was such a kind hearted man you know everybody loved juice world and yep. i remember the day juice world died that hit me i can remember the day mac miller died when x died when little peep died but when juice world died i woke up and my partner said hey i've got some bad news and i was like what what is it and he said juice world died it was such a shock that this man who was essentially a legend in the 2010s and what would have been the 2020s yep. just died. And, you know, I believe he was in um, Queensland, just the, the last concert he did. Yeah, Juice World passing away was just the saddest thing. It's so strange seeing how these SoundCloud rappers, they all know each other and yet they all just leave. He was certainly a, a, a young man of great potential and it was the best thing that I heard amongst that selection that I ran through. It was, it was mm. so young. He was, but surprisingly, I, I say it's the best thing I heard amongst that collection, but not by the kind mm. of distance you'd imagine. You know, there were, there were mm-hmm. other really good things in there too. And we'll come to a couple of them shortly. However, first we have to deal with Young Gravy. No, you don't say anything bad about Young Gravy. How can I say this and not make it sound bad? Don't listen to Young Gravy. He's crap. Listen to Young Gravy. He's terrific. He rips charisma. He's terrible. I'm not entirely sure they tell him what song he's rapping to. He just walks up and starts saying things. What song did you listen to? It was called Off the Goop. Off the Goop? Was that the one with Ski Mask? No. I googled Worst Rapper Ever and he was the one who came up. That's how I got him. There is another young young man on it. Um, Oh, Baby No Money. Oh, there you are. It's Baby No Money. He's crap. Yeah, his bestie. That song is just offensive on every possible level. It goes out of its way to offend just about everyone. With its sheer blasé casualness. Yeah. (laughs) If you're going to listen to Young Gravy, don't listen to the album Gas and Over. Um, I wasn't a fan of it, but there was one great song that came of it which was Oops, which is the best song to ever be written. This is interesting, the the videos, the videos, people, when when hip hop videos first started coming out, people were complaining about them because they objectified women and they project a Mm -hmm. counter aspirational, I should say, lifestyle on young black men. They haven't changed. They absolutely haven't changed, except instead of a Glock in your pocket, they've got rocket launchers. But yeah, Young Gravy is great. You are wrong. Goodbye. A step up, believe it or not. Well, everybody's a step up from Young Gravy, but a very short step up is Little Yachty. Little Yachty! Ah, I love Little Yachty! One Night, I think, was the song. I I was shocked to see how little songs Little Yachty actually has by himself. But yeah, I was just like, what is this? Is it duller than, than, uh, than Trippy Red's song or... 
This is mumble. No, I think Lil Yachty's better than Trippy Red just because he's Lil Yachty. This is this is what I'd call mumble rap, Lil Yachty, because you can't understand. Yeah, he is. But he's again, very mumbly. But then again, it's the it's the it's the girls, the ice, the yacht. He's got to have a yacht. I, I'm sure if you looked on his arm, there'd be a fake Rolex yacht master. Yeah, probably. I just think there's something very incredible about Lil Yachty because. He has managed to make a song with Drake and the baby. I don't like either of those two men. And yet he has put something in that song that Oprah's bank account is probably my most played song. Yeah. It's probably going to be my Spotify rewind. But to those playing along at home though, Little Yachty is probably not your ideal starting point into alternative hip hop. Many, he many has some really good songs with Juice World though. So you're probably going to have to get into it if you're going to start with Juice World. This guy is an outlier from it all, um, Little Dicky. Little Dicky. Um, now this is nerdcore guys, this is white Jewish rap at its finest because he doesn't mumble you can understand what he's saying and he makes some very clever and articulate points yeah a comedy rapper i think he realized you know he's a little white jewish boy he's the minority in rap beastie boys were little white jewish boys i haven't heard the beastie boys in ages no it's been far too long we going way back 15 years or whatever here Grew up on, a, on, on all those MC Lars records that, that we used to have around the house. That's much the same thing, except he actually tries to teach you something about American literature. And gigantic robots. The Slump God. To me, he's the most conventional, old school rapper of all the ones I listen to. His father was a rapper who used the name Sin City, which is also Ski Master's latest album. And his father made him focus on writing his own raps from a young age. Yep. And I think when he met X in um, the juvenile detention, he sort of just went with it and he made his own little thing technique is very good and he's got this way of sort of operatically building a line and then letting it go and he builds the line up mm. and lets it go and that's what makes, stops the song from just being another one of these boring i'm gonna kill your ass songs is is that that he's, his ability to to harness cadence a sense of drama there my favorite line from that one is you copy me you parakeet you're my breakfast i like uh you know we got that scurvy need a tangerine yeah, you do need a tangerine to got scurvy. Where did he think of that? That's good. Well, then there's just, what's so fun is he'll have those little fun lines. You know, he's very big on referencing, like, Nickelodeon cartoons. Because he just likes to watch cartoons. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's just like, um, if you're my children and I abort it, will I go to hell? And then it's just like, where did that come from, Ski Mask? If you want to be a good like a famous rapper you go to the company lyrical lemonade i think it yeah, is who, who and you that? work with cole bennett and he will make you a star baby um but, but for sin city he was just like no i'm gonna go somewhere else part of the reason i think that hip-hop has has lasted for 25 years and been the dominant musical force mm -hmm. in the world in that time um is because it seems to infinitely be able to to split off into, into subgroups and, 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 and something will become big that was underground for three years and then all of a sudden someone or something will blow it up. What's the next thing that's going to blow up in hip hop? When people try to evolve into the next trend, most of the time it just doesn't work out. They just get laughed at and it's like, stay in your lane. With the internet, now anybody can make music anywhere. Hip hop is whatever you want it to be nowadays. You look at Lil Peep and he was considered the next Kurt Cobain. You look at Doja Cat who started off with just random posting on the internet and now she's one of the biggest sellers in the R&B scene. So hip hop, 
really nowadays is just whatever the internet decides it is. Well, sweetie, it's been a delight. It has been a delight.